How's it going? My name is Freddie Minifield. I am the senior pastor of Word Life Church. Um, we've been dealing with or uh, walking through understanding faith and grace. This uh, week's lesson is is our response. What what is our response to 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 faith? What is our response to to God? The we're going to focus on faith. Uh, mostly this evening. The definition of faith is um, in the in the Hebrews, it's firmness, it's fidelity, it's steadfastness. In, in the Greek, it is um, uh, conviction based upon hearing. So think about that for a second. Faith is conviction that is based on hearing. That's the Greek definition of, of, of faith. Uh, persuasion that is credence, uh, morale, um, especially reliance upon Christ for salvation. Um, faith, according to scripture, let's go to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. And if you've heard any teaching on faith, uh, this is the most uh, common scripture that you'll hear uh, faith taught from. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hope for the evidence of things not seen there is evidence that is a result there's substance there is there is there is a way to have evidence of things that are not seen you know one of the uh primary primary ways of having evidence of things that aren't seen is a strong conviction faith is a conviction of something that you don't see. Uh, case in point, you, if you are a believer, if you said yes to Jesus Christ, you said yes to someone you never saw. If you know in your heart, if you know in your knower that you're going to heaven, you are going to a place and you know that you are going to a place that you've never seen. And that is a strong conviction. That That is evidence that is faith that's what we're talking about we're talking about substance i'm gonna read hebrews 11 1 again now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen uh, the word substance in the greek is hypostasis things put under it's a substructure or foundation that which has foundation, that which has actual existence, assurance, or title deed. Let's talk about that, that word foundation for a, sec for a second. Now, every house has a foundation. Every house is built on a foundation. How many of us see the foundation? If we weren't there when the house was being built, I submit to you that you've never seen the foundation. If you are living in a house that was already built before you moved into it, you've never seen the foundation. However, that we know the foundation exists because the house is standing. Faith is our foundation. We build our lives, our hope, our confidence. The substance that we have to believe is faith. It's our foundation. The, the, the substance, the faith is a foundation for what, for what we believe for. How, let, me, let me see how I can make this more plain. Um, you and I, but we have faith in something. We have, we have human faith already. Every time we sit down in a chair, we don't look back we don't we don't we don't take our time we don't we don't go and and look to see if the chair is there what do we do we plop down that is human faith every time you and i get on the airplane we get on the airplane we don't we don't you know go and interview the pilot we don't go and you know check them we, we don't get a flashlight and look in their eyes to see if their pupils are dilated we hand the the attendant our ticket and we go in there and we sit down and do whatever we're going to do till we fly to our destination. That is human faith. That is something that we all have already. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about 
our response to God. Faith is taking God at his word. Faith, the foundation of what we're believing for, what we, how we're trusting, is something that is not seen in the natural, but it is acted on. You are believing God. Again, if you're a believer, you are believing in someone that you can't tangibly touch, but you're believing him with all of your heart. I can speak for my own self. You know, I've, I've never seen God per se, but I've experienced God in a very, very tangible way. So much so, he is more real to me than people I interact with. How could I say that? Because I've experienced him on a level that, that is more real than this natural world. And when we get to that point, we, we, we respond differently. We do the things that we do differently because of that firm foundation. Faith brings into existence from the spirit realm into the natural realm, into a physical uh, existence. How, how do I mean? Faith is the bridge, or let's say it like this. Faith is the, the cargo truck that transports <clears throat> things from the spirit realm into the natural realm. The, the mode of transportation that brings anything from the unseen into the seen is what faith is. That, there, there, that is the substance of the things that we're, that we're hoping for. Faith is the assurance that we have something, although it's unseen. Faith is the title deed of something that we own. Um, if you have, if you bring, let's, let's say car, let's say if you bring me a title of your car, that is proof or evidence that you own that car. Now, I may not see the car at all, but I see the evidence, I see the title of that car, and that's, and that's my evidence, that's my proof that that car, I like the example of, of layaway. Um, when you lay an item away, if you do layaway, if you lay an item away, you have a claim ticket that says that the items that the store is storing on your behalf, you, you have a ticket, a claim ticket that says those items are mine, I'm just paying them down and once they're they're paid off, you don't get a different item. It's the, the claim ticket is proof that those things that you're not seeing on a natural uh, or, or on a regular basis exist. And our response, and I know I'm taking time uh, to, to lay the foundation for faith because it's so important that we, that we know and understand what is our response? How do we respond to God's grace? We can't get away from faith and grace. Faith represents our response to the grace of God. God has provided some things that we cannot see. Faith is how we receive those things. It's our, our response. Faith is the only biblical way to respond to God's grace. Faith, let's go to Hebrews chapter, let's drop down to verse six. We were in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse one. Let's drop down to verse six. Verse six says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. See, that's the, that's the action. It's impossible to, to, to please God without faith. Why is that? Why, why would that be written in there like that? It's impossible to please God without faith because faith is the only way we receive anything from God. So it's impossible to, to please God if we don't receive from Him. If you don't get healed, God is not pleased. 
If you don't get saved or born again, God is not pleased. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't have your needs met, God is not pleased. The correlation is the way we get saved, the way we get healed, the way we get our needs met is by faith. So it is impossible to please God without faith. We need to, to, to receive from God. And the only way that's possible is faith. The teaching that you can be saved by God's grace alone away from faith is just straight up error. There's no way that you could have just grace and not have faith. That is just not, that's not possible. So we, we have to be, we have to be very mindful to say things like, you know, I am a faith man. Well, that's not true. Because if it wasn't for the grace of God, I wouldn't have a reason <laughs> to, it's kind of like, the, the, the grace of God represents the things that are in the spirit realm. If there is nothing in the spirit realm, it doesn't matter what I call myself, there's no receiving. And I can never say, oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a grace man. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. What my, my hope is, and the, the whole purpose of this, this study is to show us to go over and remind us or teach some of us that it is impossible to be just grace. It is impossible to be just faith without being in error. We're talking about understanding grace and faith because we need it. We need the both of them. And it's, it's a little irritating that the enemy has been so effective as of drawing this, of putting this wedge between the body of Christ and, and, and dividing it to where there's uh, grace over here and faith over here. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2. And see what the Bible says about it. What, is, what, is, what does God say? I know there have been some people who have uh, stuck their their flag on the grace side and some people who have stuck their flag on the faith side and and and, and they and they think and I, I don't even like talking like that I don't even like talking about uh, believers I'm, I'm using that analogy to make my point Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 it says for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. By grace, God's part, through faith, our part. It is a gift and none of us can boast on how much faith we have. None of us can boast on, on how we have, a, we have a revelation of grace and, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm awesome, I'm, I'm free because I have a revelation of grace. Well, you can have a revelation of grace I can have a revelation of grace, but it's through faith that we're saved. It's through faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. We can't leave faith aside. And without grace, there's nothing to even receive. So um, my, my hope is, I'm, and I'm, I'm out of time for, for this evening. We'll get into um, some more. But here by heart, <laughs> my, my, my heart is, uh, don't get caught up in the foolishness of, of, of taking a side and say, I'm a grace man. Or don't get caught up in taking a side and say, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a faith man. That's not God's order. God's order is that you and I are saved by grace through faith. We absolutely need to understand grace and faith and, and, and stop the, the, the foolishness and stop allowing the enemy to have his way in dividing the body of Christ. Um, I love you, God bless you. Thank you for taking time out to, to listen. Hope I didn't make anybody upset. <laughs> or I, what my, my desire is to make all of us look at the word of God. I, I, I hope you hear my heart and get a real understanding of what, there's too much to accomplish. There's too much to get done to, to, to have the body. Could you imagine the head being mad at the feet and the feet saying, well, I'm not going. 
I'm not going to walk today because the, the, the head, you know, uh, made me mad. The, the head didn't say I was valuable, so I'm not going to walk. Think about how silly that is. You, you don't ever go anywhere without your body. Jesus Christ is the head of the church, and we're his body. Don't you know he doesn't want us divided? He wants us walking in unity to be witnesses, to accomplish the whole purpose of why he came for you and I to be witnesses. So let us know if we can pray with you in any way. You know, I believe with all of my heart that, that Jesus is Lord and Jesus desires for his body to walk in unison. God bless you. Thanks for, for tuning in. This has been Life in the Word. See you next time.